Welcome. Thanks for being part of tonight's youth service. We are all in for a treat as the team leads us in worship and Pastor Trey is going to remind us that when God calls us, he also makes sure to equip us to do the very work he puts in front of us, no matter how difficult or challenging it may be. So enjoy the service and my prayer is that God uses it to grow and stretch each of us tonight. So before we get started, let's pray. Father, thank you for the technology that allows us to connect midweek, Lord. We ask your blessing on all that's going to happen. For all who continue to struggle, Lord, financially or struggle physically, Lord, we pray that you come alongside of each of them and comfort them as only you can, Lord. For each of us in our needs, Lord, may we feel your presence in a very real way. Use tonight's service, Lord, to grow us, to stretch us, to encourage us, God, we give you all the glory, and we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Enjoy the service.
I know we've been been singing that psalm probably quite a bit, and um, if I'm honest, if if you were in my home, there's like three songs that I probably keep on repeat, um, especially now. And and the part about the psalm that I I find the most uh, powerful is the caught up in your presence, because if I'm honest, the weight of the world kind of holds me down. And the reality is that the only thing that's going to help, nothing else can fix a problem. Nothing else can offer the answer. The only solution is Jesus Christ. So even in times like these, which for some of us seem so frequent, seem to happen so often, that the presence of God is still the place that we can go. Even when we don't seem to have any solutions or any answers or where we go for a loss of words, that the presence of God It's still the place that we can rest. And it's caught up in that presence that's going to be a lot of us, our source of strength. It's going to be a source of our hope. The presence of God offers peace. The presence of God is where we'll find rest. The presence of God is where we need to be most. In this world, you will face trials, but Jesus says he's overcome. And so the way that we get to experience what he's overcome, we have to be close with him. I want to go ahead and jump in to my scripture. I'm reading in Luke 1, starting at verse 26, and it reads this way. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. Then the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God 
will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. God, I come to you right now. Guard my heart. Guard my tongue. God, you lead. I'll follow. You say what needs to be said. You do what needs to be done. God, speak peace to our hearts. Give grace to our minds. God, help us find your rest. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Um, for those of you who um, may or may not be aware of this, um, for years before I began to preach, I actually did music. Now, now, here's the thing about when you would do music or you do music. You don't just do music. In fact, what they try to do is they say, we need to make you a media person. So as many outlets for you to be seen will do. And so what they did for me was they started me in acting. In fact, I was a really good actor. I was like really, really good. I was so good that Denzel Washington never called me. But that's neither here nor there. But as I was preparing, I would get these small roles and they would have me do plays. And even though the plays weren't well known, they would be in these big venues. And after a while, I began to get the attention of some people and I would be like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? In fact, there was one person who was the agent of someone fairly famous, not going to name drop here. But they said, hey, we need an Anthony Anderson type to be a part of a movie. Is Trey interested? And I was like, yeah, OK, let's make this happen. And so they had me do some headshots and they had me do a screen test where they sent it out and I sent it. And eventually I got a call that I need to come to Atlanta for the next step. Now, when I heard I got the call, I was convinced like I've made it. In fact, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was in Los Angeles for a while. I went out to the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I said, okay, where can my star go? I went and bought me some big sunglasses. I was doing it. But the whole time, my road manager, David, was like, hey, Trey, here, here's the script of what you're going to be reading for. And I was like, well, I need a script. I don't use a script, man. I'm good. I got this. I'm, I'm fine. All the way, literally, we had some other events. I got to Atlanta a little bit early. We added a show. We had all these things going on fun. And the whole time, David was saying, hey, Trey, hey, we got, we, we got to get prepared. Here's your script. Uh, David, though, they called me, man. I'm good. And I was so happy that I got called. I didn't think I needed to do the work. The day of the day that I'm supposed to go and, and, and read with the cast, or at least I thought it was the cast, I get to this beautiful place and I get in this long hallway and what I realized is this hallway was full of, of black men who were kind of, you know, heavy set and we all were kind of loud. What I realized is I assumed that I got called so that mean I got the part. And when I got there and I began to realize that me getting the call was just the beginning, there was still another step and a whole bunch of other people were called as well. And, of course, I went in and I read the part. I didn't get the part. But a couple of months later, I ran into this agent again, and, and they asked me, how did the time go? They said, yeah, we, we gave the part to someone else. And, and I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, what, what was it about the role? She said, I thought you were perfect for the role. And I was like, yeah, but I just really didn't read the script ahead of time. Now, if I had a read the script later and then went, I said I was good. In fact, I actually redid the shoot for her. And she was like, Trey, if you had done that when you had the opportunity, you would have definitely got the part. I was like, I didn't know that was a part of it. I didn't think that was part of what was required. See, if I'm being honest, I was just happy with being called. But the point was not to be just called. See, here, here, here's, here's the greater point. In church, we give you the religious jargon sometimes that you're called, you're called, you're called, yeah, you're called. We, we say, you called. I've said it. You're called. But the call is just the beginning part. In fact, Jesus tells a story, and the way he ends the story is he says that many are called, but chosen are few, which means that there must be a difference in just the call and being chosen. And unfortunately, many of us have settled on just being called and not understanding the weight of the responsibility of that calling, which leads to being chosen. There's another step. 
And I'm giving you incomplete information if I don't tell you that the call is beautiful, but chosen are few. Let me go back to this story. This is the story where Mary realizes that she has been chosen by God to bring the Savior of the world into the earth. And and it says what happens is, is that she's in Nazareth and that an angel shows up. And when this angel shows up, the angel says, you're favored and you're called and you're chosen and all this stuff by God. And it says that when she heard what the angel said, it left her not only disturbed, but confused. And I was like, well, well, why would you be disturbed and confused? Well, then I thought about it, and here's what I realized. Well, that it's one thing to hear what God has for you, but the world around you may be screaming something very different. Let me put this in context. This is a teenage girl who is about to get married in a religious society. She's in a poor place. She's in a place called Nazareth. In fact, people would speak so badly about Nazareth that when people would hear Jesus of Nazareth, one of Jesus' own disciples responded, Nazareth, what good could come from Nazareth? So this is the place that Mary finds herself. This is the area that she sees the world. This is the way that she sees everything. And in this moment, Jesus is coming through her, but God says, you're favored and I'm with you. But she don't feel like God is with her. She don't feel favored. See, oftentimes what we have to understand is that the call of God is never going to meet us in a place where we were comforted. Oftentimes, if we're truly being real, that the call of God usually catches us in a bad space. A space where we don't seem qualified. A space where we don't seem that we have all the tools. But that's where God begins the call. And notice I says that's where he begins the call. See, even in this moment, I can share with you that I feel that I'm called to certain things, but I have to look at myself and I look at where I'm at, my station in life, the way I feel, my emotions, and all these things play into sometimes me counting or saying, am I really called? Doubting some gift that I feel that God has put in me because in the reality, I don't think I can be used. I'm not effective. I'm not good enough because of where I'm at. Let me speak very frankly. Many of you have heard me talk about my issues and the things that I have overcome when it comes to race and all these problems that I've seen in my past. And I'll be real with you. Some of those hurts have left me scarred. And I even know that God has called me this, but I'm like, whoa, 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 God, I'm, I'm too beat up. This, this can't be you because I don't feel like it would work right now. It almost leaves me in a place of hopelessness. See, even when God called her, he didn't call her to a place that was going to be easy. See, the moment she becomes pregnant, a lot of people are going to have a whole lot to say. So the call of God does not lead to calm in your life, but it does lead to purpose. And so what I have to understand is I'm like, God, get me to a place of calm and saying, God saying, well, hold up, Trey. Maybe I haven't called you to a place of calm. Maybe I've called you to be the calm in the storm. But that's where he's called me. As I keep reading through this text, she even has the doubt. She's like, hold up, it can't be me. Uh, I, don't have a, I don't have a husband. I don't have this. I don't have the tools. I don't have the skills. I don't have a whole bunch of things. And so some of us, we say, well, God called me, but I can't. Not me, Lord. It's not your job to have what you need. It's your job to trust God so he can give you what you need. And so oftentimes, if we don't get to that place of acceptance and surrender to what God has for us, then God cannot effectively use us. It's a beautiful thing that I'm learning over and over and over and that we say it and it's in some in scripture and different words. But God does not call the equipped. He equips the call. And so where we may feel hopeless and weak in these moments, God's saying, no, 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 this is your opportunity to lean in me because here's the payoff. What God wants most is the response to the call. Mary in this moment, after she's heard this and she's shown God her doubts and said, I don't know if I can do this. She says, no, 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 but you said it, so be done. And what's the most beautiful thing? Thing that when I feel like I'm going down, the scripture says that the word of God will never fail. So if God says it, 
It can't fail. It don't matter if I don't believe it. God's word can't fail. And there's a time as we are in right now that we have to say, hey, the systems will fail. Man will fail. People will let you down, but God will never fail. And it's in that space that I move to an acceptance and a responsibility of what God has called me to do. And I say, not my will, but your will be done. See, that's why you're chosen, because you accept the responsibility of the call. However, you're not going to be called to something easy. Here's Mary's conversation with an angel about what God wants to do in and through her. That's her purpose. You know someone else who had a conversation with God? about what God wanted to do in and through them? Jesus. When Jesus goes to the garden and he prays, he knows what's at stake. He knows what's about to happen. His prayer to God was, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. I I know what you called me to do, but I I I don't want to accept that. You know why? Because it's going to hurt. I know what you want me to do, and I see the purpose of it, but it's going to hurt. There's pain in this call. There's discomfort in this call. But not my will, but your will be done. See, some of us have to be honest that the things that God has called us to will make us uncomfortable. The things that he wants us to speak out about will make us uncomfortable. But it's that willingness to sacrifice, not my will, but your will be done, which takes you from the many to the few. Sometimes this is a whole lot more comforting. There's many here. They can feel alone in the few. But that space of being chosen... It's going to require a higher level of commitment to the Lord, not to man, not to an agenda, not to an idea, but to his will. And even in his will, sometimes some of us can't see God being used. We can't see what God is doing because everything around us will say this ain't happening right now. But my station in life and my position in life do not determine the goodness of God working in and through me. Yeah, I, I, junk is messed up. Can I be honest? Yeah, I got a smile right now, but I've had to cry. Yeah, I'm saying, well, hey, God, you know, a few weeks I said that you have uniquely gifted me and my wife to be a voice of reconciliation in a time such as this. And right now I don't feel like it. I've doubted it. And if I'm not careful, I can let what I see and what I feel, those doubts call me to abandon the purpose that God has for my life. I can let discouragement keep me on the sidelines. But it's those who decide to push through. It's those who not just accept the call, but the weight of the responsibility of being called by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To not just receive, but to make a difference in the world. Not just to see God, but to make sure that God is seen in and through you. To move closer to those people that are hurting, not try to figure out why they're hurting, not even try to be a solution to the problem, but say, let me show you Jesus. Even though it seems like everything is going wrong. Yes, our times are confusing and our times are disturbing. But the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that came upon Mary is seeking to come and work in and through you. But we have to say, not my will, but yours be done. And it's at that place that God, the God of all gods, the King of kings, can make a difference. And listen, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to happen like this in the world. And you know what I'm talking about in this moment. 
feels like we're being compounded with one thing after another. But where trouble seems to abound, God's grace will abound that much more. And right now, our ability and willingness to say, God, your will be done, will fill the gap between the call and being chosen and experiencing his grace and peace like never before. Listen, I love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus is your hope. Man will let you down. Can I go a little bit further? Church may let you down. But our hope is in the Lord. I love this community. I love this body. Even if you're like, hey, I've never been to Bethel. I love you too. Because you're valuable to God. Till next time. Love you. Tubbo's up. I'm out. search the world but he couldn't fail me man's empty praise treasures to fade are never enough you came along and put me back together is now satisfied here in love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better than you
Turn seas into high. 